Hey team, I hope you're doing well. So, I bet you didn't expect to see this engine back. This is the one that we did the engine transplant and it's, I just love it. I love it. It's so clean, it's, uh, it's great. And I decided, you know what? We can't let this go. We have to tackle it and we have to try and fix the issues. And I spoke to my friend Kenny from Ken Small Engines and he said, check it out, measure it and see if you can remove just a tiny amount from the connecting rod cap to take out that knock. He said that uh, it's not something that you'd do on a vehicle or a car, um, but it was done um, on Model Ts apparently. And also I was watching another video that he sent me and a guy said that it was done on some of the older engines, especially hit and miss engines, that uh, you would be able to remove shims between the caps. And uh, so we're gonna give it a go. This is a mower. It's a low running, low load engine. I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. We're gonna give it a go. And uh, first thing though, before we start tearing into it, I'm gonna do a leak down test. This will have a decompression valve or ACR, I think they call it, or automatic compression release. So I can't do a compression test, but I want to see how much um, blow by there is past the rings, get a quantitative number, because I might also replace the rings while I'm in there. If I can't fix the knock, I'll put a new connecting rod in there and we'll go from there. But I just, I don't like giving up. All right, so we're all set up. We're pushing air into the cylinder and uh, the original value was 30 PSI going in and we need to check the right gauge and that is giving us 15, 15 PSI. We've got 50% loss technically. Let's go and see uh, where that is. So I've now increased the air going in to around about 80 PSI because it's going to make it easier to find the leak and I've got some lit incense. I'm just going to hold it around, in this case the exhaust, and I'm not noticing any excessive air blowing out. So I think the exhaust for now, we're gonna call okay. Intake, just see if it's blowing out any air. And I don't see anything coming out there at all. Around the gasket, head gasket. I don't notice any change of the smoke's pattern. So I think we'll call that fine. Uh, then leaves. Ah, there you go, can you hear that? Can you see how it's blowing it out so much? That's a leak past the rings, and that means that the rings are worn, probably because it went low on oil. And that's also probably why the connecting rod has um, started to knock. And just a quick zoom in on that plug, you can see how much uh, oil is being burned. And again, that's just where it's passing the rings. So it's a nice indicator. It confirms from multiple angles as to what's exactly going on. So uh, yeah, let's tear into it. There we're aligned there, that should come out now. There we go. We'll go in with the ratchet. Move that to there. I'm gonna go past it, bring that back, ease that out, and then it slips all the way out just like that. So that can go on there. We'll clean that off in a minute as well. And then we'll pull our piston out. Let's have a little look, see exactly what's been going on here. There's certainly some, some scoring. A lot of carbon buildup. All right, let's uh, wash everything down because we can't really inspect anything like this. We'll then start measuring it and see what we got. So looking at the, we'll, we'll look at the bearings and journals. So we've got uh, the PTO side bearing and actually besides looking a little bit discolored and looks slightly scratched, actually it's really smooth all the way around. So uh, there's no gouges, there's no damage, there's, you know, it just looks like a bit of wear. Then we've got the uh, journals. We have the PTO journal, which looks really nice. Again, there's no damage. Bit of rust from where I've washed it, but that's fine, I'll wipe that off. Main journal, again, nothing wrong with it. It's not scratched up or dinged or damaged. And then the mag side journal is the same. So it looks to be the case that uh, really, it's probably just not had the oil change done frequently enough and it's just kind of worn out. It doesn't look like it's uh, been run low on oil. And then we've got the uh, connecting rod big end bearings and they're the same, smooth, 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 smooth. So I can only imagine we've got knots, so we're gonna have 
wear in this thrust direction, but we'll have to measure that. We'll measure everything. And then last but not least is the bearing in the uh, case itself. And again, smooth. That one looks like you can actually replace it. Uh, so nothing hugely concerning um, or catastrophic so far. What I need to do now is uh, measure everything. I think very few people are going to actually be interested. If you're interested, take a screenshot at this. If you're not interested, we're going to get right into the summary of it. We have um, a huge amount of clearance in this thrust direction of the big end of the conrod. That's where the knock's coming from, and the piston rings are really warm. So I spoke to my buddy Kenny. Uh, uh, he's given me so much great advice. Thank you so much, Kenny. I wouldn't have done this without you, mate. I really appreciate it. He suggested to be able to take up thrust clearance with a rod cap at this kind of 11 to 5 angle, you will want to take off uh, at a taper at an angle, um, material from both sides, top and bottom, and that when I torque it, I'll then pull that up, that this cap up, and it will remove some of that clearance that we've got in this thrust direction. So it's getting a bit late now. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'll do it tomorrow and I'll get you set up and, and we'll just see how we go. So what I've done, I've elevated the, the glass block that's going to act as my flat surface to register against. So it's just with paper. So it's just slightly below the height of this uh, abrasive block. And that way we're going to creep up on it. So we want to remove the inside here of this rod and if that's the case we need to be this way yeah that's starting to work slow progress but we're going to do it like this right good now, if I put that up against this cap, although it probably hasn't got much pivot room, can you see how at the bottom it's opened a gap? At the top it's still flat, tight and closed? It's exactly what I want. This is the connecting rod where it joins like this. You take that and the cap comes off. And I was basically on the cap that comes away going at this angle, so I was cutting off you can kind of see the angle that I've got. You can actually see it. You can see it's no longer square. It's actually tapered. And then the same up the top. I found that it was just a bit tight. So I put some valve lapping compound on and lapped it gently. I, I talked it up to spec, lapped it gently. And I want to finish off with telling you the numbers. This is awesome. So I was looking for around about 0 0.05 to 0 0.075 um, millimeters of clearance. And I had, well, let's go, what it was originally when it first came apart, the thrust was 0 0.193. It was huge. No wonder we had the knock. And then 90 degrees to thrust, it was not too bad, 0 0.087. That, was, that would have been okay. Even though it was slightly out of spec, it would have been more than fine. Now what we've done is we've got the thrust all the way down to 0 0.072 and 90 degrees to thrust, 0 0.084. So... This before was uh, kind of out of round. It was totally out of round. Now we're back in much closer to round and we are much closer to spec. Uh, I couldn't be happier with that. So really all that's left now, and I've checked that as well and that's very, very close all the way around. So that's, that's perfect as well. All that's left is to put it back together. I mean the truth. I've turned down the RPMs to see if it's going to be any more audible. And I can't, I can't hear it. Can you?
So there we have it. I can't hear audible knocking standing next to the mower. And I suppose in that respect, it's a huge improvement because beforehand it was as clear as day. That knocking was, you can't really not hear it. However, that doesn't mean that it's not still knocking. It's just that I can't hear it over the engine noise. Now, when I come back to edit the video, I may very well be able to pick up on it. And if, uh, let me know what you think, whether you can hear it over your speakers. Let me know in the comment section below if you can still hear it knocking and how much you think that is an improvement. And I guess the question is, is it worth it? And the answer is no, I don't think so. That doesn't mean that that skill set of being able to take material off and measure accurately is not a useful skill because it certainly could be in future projects and certain engines. However, for a lawnmower, if you want to have some fun and you want to challenge yourself, I suggest going for it. You've got nothing to lose. If the engine's already knocking, you can only really improve it. And if it gets any worse, it's not going to cause any extra problems because it's already stuffed. Financially, yes. Time-wise, no. I would just say either... I, yeah, I mean, sticking a new Conrad on is, is an easy task to do. So do that. And I think, especially in America, you'd get them cheap. But out here in Australia, parts are hugely expensive. So all in all, to summarise, a huge improvement. I can't say whether I've eliminated the knock completely, but I can't hear it over the sound of the engine. I'm going to have to watch the video back. But uh, if you've got this far, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And until next time, I'll catch you very, very soon.